did not work on this book at all, um, but I am a comic book editor. I work at Random House, um, and I worked in comics for a really long time. I worked with the writers and the artists to make their stories. I tragically did not get to work on this one. Whitney did, but um, I, I'm here because I am married into the family. That one's my husband, so here I am. Um, and just a note before we go on with the panel, that if anyone, um, right after this panel, we are going to announce the uh, cover drawing contest winners. So stick around, especially if you do a cover, to uh, see who won the grand prize. We had so many good ones this year, it was really hard to pick. Um, but we got series Yotsuba. <laughs> I am Cameron Chittick. Uh, I wrote the Mapmaker series. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio originally, but I live here in Sudbury, Massachusetts, so this is Silver Unicorn is our, our uh, go-to bookstore. It's awesome to be here today. Um, favorite character from a comic that's not from Mapmakers? I got into comics because I found my dad's old box of dusty comics when he was a kid, um, many of which were Spider-Man, so Peter Parker is, is still my guy. Hi, and I'm Whitney Leppard, and I am the editor for Mad Makers. I am from Texas, uh, but I currently live in New York City, and uh, favorite character would be Magneto from the X-Men. <laughs> Notably a villain, just for the record. Not all editors are villains, but that one is right there. That one definitely is. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about map makers for anyone here who doesn't know the book, just so we can all get to know it a little bit. Um, book three just came out, so the whole series is out now, which is so exciting. You can finally know how the adventures end. Um, but wait, I'm going to put you on the spot as the editor to tell us what map makers is all about. And then Cam, I'm gonna have you tell us how you came up with the idea. And then Amanda, I want you to tell us why you decided to sign on for this crazy adventure as the artist. All right, so for everyone out here, who really, really wants to go on an adventure? Like, is tired of staying at home, wants to go on an adventure? Yeah, all of you, this book is about you. It's about Alidade, who is a girl who is tired of staying in her small village, and all she does is she wants to go on an adventure, but she keeps getting stopped by the nightcoats. And so she, the nightcoats are the ones who have the rules, and they have so many rules that Alidade ends up breaking the rules constantly because she's a bit of a troublemaker. And what happens is as she's trying to escape the night coats, she stumbles upon um, the map makers and the uh, uh, hidden lodge. Thank you. <laughs> yes, was like, the, I was gonna say cabin. I was like, that's the wrong word. Yeah, a hidden lodge in which she discovers that there's this magic that used to exist that the map makers uh, that the night coats got rid of. And so the book series is about Alidade learning about how to become a map maker and bringing magic back to the world. Uh, how I came up with it, yeah. Okay, so I, there's kind of two phases of coming up with it. The first is that I love reading fantasy books. Those are like my favorite kind of books to read. And if anyone here has read a fantasy book, the first thing in a fantasy book is a map. And it's usually ornately illustrated, immaculate, and completely made up. And I used to just love, even now, like when I'm reading a fantasy book, I love the map, I'm looking 
has all the little details. And so the, the original sort of kernel of an idea was just what if one of those was magic? What if this was really you know, made up place um, on this map? What if one of these maps was magical? What would that look like? What would that magic look like? How would you make a magical map? What, would it, what effect would it have on the world? Um, but then there's kind of second layers. I, like I said, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio originally, and at the time when I was coming up with the idea, I was living in Los Angeles. And I kind of had the realization, um, especially with uh, a wife at the time who was from Massachusetts, that I probably was not going to be, uh, I was not going to end up in Ohio. I was going to either end up in Los Angeles or Massachusetts. Um, and so the... I, as someone who was very kind of proud of where I come from and where my home meant a lot to me, um, I realized that magical maps would be a way to write about places that, are, that mean something to people. And that's where I really kind of had the, that's what I knew what the story was about. I wanted Alidate as someone who wants to go out and see the world, and there was definitely a part of me that wanted to go out and still wants to go out and have adventures and see the world and, and challenge myself and see new things. Um, that's the only way you go, you know, 3,000 miles away from your home. Um, but there's another part of me that loves where I come from. I'm really proud of where I come from and, and would be totally happy being a homebody, um, which we kind of get represented in the, in the books uh, from Alde's best friend named Lewis. And so that's, that's kind of, the, the Magical Match was the first piece and then realizing I could write about home and, and, and adventure and friendship, that, um, that, that was kind of the second piece of the, the coming up with the idea. Is it good? It works. Hello? Does it work? Yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay. Okay, um, and so for me, I was first approached by Whitney, and she was like, hey, I have this series that um, I wonder if you might be interested in being the artist on. And I just remember reading it, and as a kid, I was kind of like Cam, where I really liked reading like fantasy, like fantasy comics, fantasy books, um, and I played a lot of like fantasy adventure games. Um, and I took a look at the story and the characters, and I was like, "This is perfect," because like this is everything that I loved growing up. This was like this huge. Th there was an opportunity for me to help craft this huge, expansive world um, that. I, like one of the things that I've always loved about stories is the extent that world building can go to. And I was like, this is perfect. Like this is a blank ca canvas that I can help. Um, and so I was like, this is really great. And I think what like sold me, sold me was the idea that Alidade and Alidade is sort of like this scrappy little kid who feels like she doesn't really fit in in her town and she wants to go leave on an adventure and like as a kid who was really scrappy and like to go outside I was like I would love to bring her to life so that like kids who were just like me could have someone that they could really like look up to and relate to um, and just like her friendship with Lewis as well um, was just like so sweet and like thoughtful so I it was an instant soul like I was sold <laughs> Yeah. Um, and part of the process, like, I, so I kind of came up with the original idea, which was at the, the form that I sent to Wit was like this really long document that's just kind of like the ravings of a madman of like, this is what the story could be, and it could be this and that, and um, which is what Amanda then got. And so the, Whitney showed me some of Amanda's work, and I was so excited. It, it hit all the things that I thought the story needed to, to really kind of um, come alive the way that I, I hoped. Uh, and when we first, when I knew that Amanda was like the perfect artist for this, from the first time we, we chatted on the phone about the project, again, I have a five page document desperately trying to explain what this story could be and why I think it could be cool. And Amanda was like, oh yeah, I, I enjoyed it. And then like in one sentence summarized the entire, like more accurately came up with what I was trying to say in like two sentences. I was like, oh, okay, you get it. That's good. That You get it better than I do. So that, that, that'll work out well. <laughs> All right, so I want to talk about some of the characters. We've talked about Alidade, we've talked about Lewis, our, our best friend duo, but now that all three books are out, we've met a lot of different characters, um, a lot of, from all different places in the magical land that this book series takes place in. So I want to ask each one of you, which character do you think you're most like, which character is your favorite, and for your favorite character, if they lived in our world, what would be their favorite subject in school? Okay, um, I think my most relatable character 
would probably be oh, this is hard <laughs> I would say Lewis I would say Lewis because I'm a little bit more on the quieter side a little bit more reserved um, but still like him kind of craves sometimes that spotlight and to like find the voice um, my favorite character in book two, um, if some of you haven't gotten there yet, but there's a character named Kato, and he is this really tall, little awkward boy um, who eventually helps them as well, becomes a map maker. I think his favorite subject would absolutely be PE. Like, he is like Mr. Jock um, in like one body. <laughs> Um, I would say, so there's a character in the third book who's brand new. Uh, she's from the Plains. Her name is Ripley. And I'm not like Ripley at all, but that's kind of why I love her, because Ripley is really cool and smart and tough and, like, totally, like, she can just do everything on her own. Like, she's got it. Um, which I really love about her and was fun to write because that's not uh, that's not me so it was nice to kind of get to pretend that I was all those things um, her favorite class in school I think she would I think she would like history because a lot of what we kind of see in the plains in particular is um, the sort of uh, the way in which our stories and our, our history is kind of passed down through generations and um, her map making in general is also kind of a family trade, so I think history would be would be up her alley. Who oh, whom I most like? Um, yeah, I avoid that. Um, I mean, I think the Alladay and Lewis. I know this is like cheating, but they they are kind of there are pieces of me in both of them um, that I think I'm, I'm neither of them, but I can see myself in both of them. <laughs> That's hard for a writer, you know? <laughs> uh, I would say my favorite character would be Peek, who's a memory from book two. He's loud, he's everywhere, he's so confident, he just gets things done. I absolutely love that about the character. And I would like to say that's the character I'm most like, but really I'm probably most like Blue. <laughs> yeah. um, and I would say Blue's favorite subject, I mean, I would say it would be like art or creative writing, where there's like a lot of like problem solving but also creating something at the same time. Wit was absolutely the blue of our like team, which is basically like helping us make sure we knew where we were going and that we got there on time and giving us a bit of um, attitude when we needed it, <laughs> when deadlines were approaching, uh, which every editor needs to be able to do. I feel like blue would have been the hall monitor. Either that or, or either that or like detention. <laughs> Blue would have been in either one. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about making the book. Um, so particularly for you guys, but with, I think that with the editing, you can also answer these questions as well, because um, I'd like your perspective. But um, what was your favorite scene to either write or draw or edit? Um, were there any scenes, pages, or things that you had that you wrote or drew, and then you had to completely take out because it wasn't right? <laughs> and what do you think you improved on the most over the course of three books? Um, let's start on the other side this time, Whitney. Okay, so favorite scene. How many of y'all have read book one? All right, all right, good. So towards the end of book one, there's this scene at the end where, uh, I know I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> nope, it's, it's book one. Y'all should have read it by now, come on. Um, the uh, It's towards the end, it's this, I it, mean, it's my favorite scene, it'll always be my favorite scene, because like, Blue is in his like majestic glory flying, and it's like towards the end of the book, and then like the map gets wet, and then suddenly he shrinks. And so he's like, so then everyone's falling because he can't hold Alladade, and they're like crashing, and Lewis tries to catch them, and they just end up in a tumble. And I like, to me, that, that, that beat is like the explanation of their friendship. <laughs> Where Blue is both majestic and a mess, and you know, Alliday is always falling, but Lewis is there to catch them both sometimes. <laughs> um, and then the second was a scene. To <laughs> I mean, I didn't take anything out, I just made suggestions. <laughs> um, I gave a lot of notes on parts of book, I, I feel like book. 
book one was pr like really solid. Book two, there's some edits towards the end, um, and then book three, there was some uh, rewriting for who the main character of the book was. Uh, <laughs> um, so it was more broad strokes from an editorial point of view, and then the the final one, what was the? I didn't improve on anything. I'm perfect in every way. No, um, no. I, I feel like the the most exciting thing for for me as an editor was working with with uh, an author and an artist who didn't know each other coming in, but then developed this close friendship and the way that y'all work together was great to see from an editorial perspective, and it was also great to work with both of you as y'all both developed how you would work together. Uh, because every author does something different, but then author teams also go, like both of you do di di things differently, so it's great to see where y'all work together, like, you know, and then the where y'all maybe didn't necessarily work together, but how that made those stories stronger because of it. Well done. <laughs> um, so I would say writing, so if you're structuring a story, it's you're basically making a big hole to put your characters in and then watching to see if they can climb their way out. And I feel like writing each script was kind of like that, where the beginning was always my favorite part to write. We got to like introduce the characters or reintroduce them and have, you know, have jokes and humor and kind of get everybody kind of reestablished. And it's really fun in the beginning. And then things get more challenging. And at some point when I hit the, not the necessarily the middle, because that's where you kind of get them in their most challenging point, Right after that, where you have to figure out how to make everything come together and work at the end and have the characters you know, succeed in the end, that's where I would start really getting in trouble. So it's kind of like I was the characters. So I have to figure out, OK, I've got them in this mess. How do we, how do we get them out of it? Um, so I think, uh, yeah, so I think, and that was most prevalent in book two, um, which I basically rewrote the entirety of book two. I like, finished book two, and uh, I read it, and I thought it was Perfect. I thought it was so good. And then um, one thing that's nice about being married to an editor is that um, you can have an editor read your stuff. And I said, hey, I finished book two. It's perfect. It's the greatest thing that's ever been written. And she did not agree. And I, t I walked away from the script, and I came back and read it. And I was like, oh, no. Not only is my script not right, she was right, and I was wrong. Um, so I had to, I emailed Amanda and Witt, and I was like, I have a script for you. I'm ahead of my deadline. I did a great job. Minor detail, the script itself needs to be entirely rewritten. So if I could just have like an extra three weeks, I'm going to try again. Um, but I think it ended up, book two ended up being the one I'm most proud of because I just failed so miserably the first time. Um, but that's, that's part of writing. Uh, my favorite, favorite scene. Um, I really like the beginning of book three, like the opening couple scenes of book three, because um, we've been with the characters for a long time, um, and they've kind of, the, the character dynamics are different than where we see in the beginning, and so it really feels like we've, the characters have come a long way, and um, so yeah, I think, I think that, in terms of like my favorite time writing it, I just remember being really excited about getting into book three and the, kind of the beginning of it. Oh, and what I learned along the way. Um, what did I prove on? Um, I, I think the book two thing, again, I think it, w it was actually like the best thing that happened to me as a writer because I learned a lot about my process of outlining and you know, there's a world in which you have, um, some people outline really, really, really detailed and some people are called pantsers where they just go by the seat of their pants and come up with it as they go. And I was kind of ending up somewhere in the middle where I'd have outlines but they weren't quite detailed enough that when I was writing, I'd still have to figure stuff out. And I think I, um, by the time book three came around, I really realized that I work best if I have a super, super, super detailed outline. So when it actually comes to writing, I know what I'm supposed to write, and I can just have fun with the characters and have fun with the moments and make sure the actual, you know, each moment is, is working the best. So I kind of learned that over the course of the three books. Um, and I'd say my favorite scene well, I'll say my favorite scene to draw um, was there's a scene in book two where it's all of the characters and they're gathered around the campfire. And I think like what I really enjoyed about that one is like not only am I like a big sucker for nighttime scenes, like camping scenes, um, but that was sort of like the point where I realized how I wanted to like I really nailed in like how I was going to draw like the world and like this like how like the stylization that I wanted to go for um, with this series and so that was sort of like a wake up moment um, and like I'm very fond of it because of that. Um, one of the things that 
Well, I didn't take anything out, but what I wish was taken out was in book one, um, Cam had a bunch of scenes where there were crowds and there were horses. And if you are an artist um, who does not enjoy either of those, you will know that it is a very grueling process to get through. However, he did learn. He did learn that I did not enjoy it very much, and so he was very kind to never write it in again <laughs> in the future books. Um, and I think for improvement, uh, what I enjoyed was that I really improved well, just drawing in general, but I really improved, I noticed, on drawing expressions. And like, it really helped to when all of the stakes of the series started building up and up um, through each book, it really helped to like nail in on like the more emotional points towards like the climax of the whole story. Um, and so I was super like excited about that and that like I could see that my work had reached like this point where I could do what I wanted to do with the narrative um, in my artwork. And, that, and that's actually like one of the, when I was, when Whitney first showed me Amanda's art, um, and we were trying to figure out what should the artist of this series look like, what, you know, what, what do we kind of need from the artist, the thing that I knew, I knew I, knew I needed, we needed someone who could draw the world building, draw the magic, you know, that whole fantasy side of it, but I knew that if the, if the books were going to work at all, we had to, uh, the reader had to become emotionally attached to the kids. Like they had to be about their, because the books are about their friendship, about their dynamic. And so the artist really had to be able to draw kids in a way that makes you like them and, in, and attached to them and emotionally invested in them. Um, and Amanda's, all of Amanda's illustrations, like the, to me, when I first saw your work, like it was the, the expressions, the, the the acting, the emotion from the characters. Um, so that was like going in, I felt like was one of your strengths. So it's cool that you feel like that's something you continue to, yeah, that's awesome. All right, so Map Makers obviously is about kid who wants to go on lots of adventures. We travel to many places. We go all over the place. It's about home. It's about travel. So I have a couple of uh, travel-related questions for all of you. Okay, first off, where is the coolest place you have traveled to in your life, and what would that place's memory be? What would the memory be for your hometown? And is there anywhere you want to go that you haven't traveled to yet? Okay, I'm going to make you start. <laughs> um, the coolest place I've ever traveled to... In Ohio, everything about Ohio is so great. No, uh, I went to, we went to Wales, um, and I'm going to forget the name of this place and where it was in Wales, but it was this incredible cliffside on the ocean, and there was a stone, like single room stone building that I think some uh, monk had, had kind of lived there, and um, it was just this really isolated, really beautiful um, just in setting. So I always think about that. We have to like hike all the way down and go down the rocks. Um, it was it was really cool. The memory of that place. Um, you know, we've never seen a fish memory, so I'm gonna say that it's like a cool fish that kind of you know lives in the shallow water. Um, and then what was the next? Place? A oh, hometown memory would be a blue heron. That's where I got blue from. Uh, growing up, I have a, uh, there was a pond in our backyard, and we just kind of live out near uh, lakes and reservoirs. And so the, the blue herons were always, I just thought, like, the coolest animal. Um, and so that, that would be the memory for that. And I've never been to Scotland. I really want to go to Scotland. Um, again, places to hike, coast, slightly cold weather. That's kind of my jam. Um, coolest place. It's, this is hard. Ohio. <laughs> okay, well, actually, yeah, I will say, like, I was just in Ohio, um, and, but, but I was there for the total eclipse, like, the full totality. That was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like, that was so, so cool. So that, actually, yeah, it is Ohio. Yeah. It, but Ohio in that specific yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then my hometown memory, 
we get a lot of hummingbirds in like my backyard since I live in California and I didn't realize until I met people who lived in other parts of the country that like that's not very common um, so I'm gonna say a hummingbird oh. and I think Somewhere I want to go um, to follow up with the Western Europe. <laughs> I really want to go to Ireland. Um, I've seen like all the sheep and all of the pasture, and I think that'd just be really cool to see. <laughs> um, the coolest place I've ever been was Japan, um, and that was really awesome. If y'all ever get a chance, definitely go. Uh, I would say a memory for Japan. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat and just be like a kitsune, which is already a mystical creature over there. <laughs> And um, the memory for my hometown would be an armadillo, because I'm from Texas. <laughs> um, and a place that I would really like to go, um, I, I would really like to go to Korea. Oh, yeah. cool. All right, this is going to be my last question. But if anybody out there has any questions after, after they answer this one, um, feel free to come. And I'll give you the mic, and you can ask them a question. So. Think through. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna maybe force Amanda to draw something. But if anyone has questions after this one, we will we'll go to those. Um, for all three of you, in your various disciplines of what you do in comics, if there are um, for any kids out there that want to draw their own comics, write their own comics, or maybe one day edit comics and work in publishing, what advice would you guys have for them to do now when they're kids, and what advice would you have for when they're actually looking to do that for a career? Oh man. Um, I think my advice for now when you're a kid um, is honestly just have fun with it. Like I feel like there's a lot of times where I still think back fondly on the like drawings and the stories that I made as a kid and you never know like it can come like come back to you when you're older and you, when you have like the skill set and like um, the narrative like sort of mastery that you can like really make something of it um, because I, I really think that drawing and art is just fun um, and I think that like people can sense when you have fun with it um, and so like I think it's really good like it is really good to like if you want to take it seriously to take it seriously but always remember that like at the core of it like there is there is fun in it and like that's part of the reason why a lot of people draw to begin with is because they enjoy it so much um, and I think when you're older oh, man that's a tough one <laughs> um, I, I honestly would just continue with it. Like, I think just, like, be self-indulgent with what you do. Um, but I guess be a little bit more, not I really want to say strategic. Um, I guess intentional is the word. Um, because I sort of got my start in comics because I was really self-indulgent in, like, making my own comics. But I was very intentional that I was like, I'm going to draw this, and I'm going to print it, and I'm going to go to shows, and I'm going to meet people, and I'm going to share it with them. And I think, like, sort of making those connections is what led me to, like, where I am today. Um, and so, like, don't be afraid of meeting other people. Like, there's a lot of people out there that would be really interested in your work. And, like, have, have confidence in yourself. Like, I think people can also see that um, in your stuff. Yep. Yeah, I would say for the writing, for the write, for anyone who wants to write, um, or just writing in general, um, I can only really speak to my experience. And I would say as a kid, I wasn't necessarily a kid who was constantly writing stories down or, or doing things like that, but I was just would get really into the stories that I loved. And I would reread them, and I would share them with my friends, and I'd talk about them with my friends, and I would just constantly be thinking, I would just be in those worlds with those characters in those stories, and I think... Um, the best thing to do, I mean, being here and finding the stories you like, seeking out the stories you like and enjoying them and, and spending time with them and holding on to them, I think that's like the most important thing. Um, and also that, you know, if you have an idea that you think would be cool, write it down. If you read a book and you think you have an idea of what those characters might do after that book ends, write it down. Tell your friend about it. Tell your folks about it. Um, I think that's, it's just, it's seeing it as a thing that's fun because it is, I, I highly recommend that. Um, and then in terms of, you know, if you ever wanted to do this as an adult, I think I would say that being published is very cool. It's very cool to have a book and have a book at a book show and get to, you know, talk with an editor and an artist. But I think that writing and expressing yourself with the written word and telling stories, I think it's just an incredible way to spend 
any bit of time. Um, and I think that if you're doing it for yourself and if you're doing it because it's a way to express yourself and understand the world around you, um, I think it's worthwhile. And I, 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 that's, that's the best part. If, if I never get another book published, I'm gonna keep writing down stories, you know. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep doing that because um, it's just the only way. I, it's the best way to spend time. So I, that's what I would say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't with him. Um, but no, uh, I, I agree with both, both, both their points. I think when you're a kid, whenever you're drawing or writing, like it's important to do it. Have fun with it. How like. Draw as much as possible, even if it's like the same thing over and over and over again. Like, feel free to just draw. I remember I was a kid. I was a kid who drew a lot. I would pause the TV because we would record on VHS tapes like Toonami, and so it'd be like Dragon Ball Z, and we'd pause, and me and my siblings would try to draw Dragon Ball Z characters really fast, and then, and then we'd keep watching the episode. And so it's like just have fun with it, whatever it is, whether it's drawing your own original characters, drawing uh, characters that you, that you love, um, writing. Whenever you write stuff, I was also a kid who wrote a bunch of stuff. And it was it's kind of fun to like have this history of like writing and drawing as a kid, but then deciding as my adult career is what I want is I want to help other people tell their stories. But it was because I fell in love with the art, like the form of storytelling. And I would say if you decide one day that you actually want to become an author or if you want to be an editor, like at the end of the day, just be patient with yourself because the world won't be. So you need to be patient with yourself and you need to give yourself time and you need to have fun while you're doing it because if it's already a chore, then it's not worth doing. I'm really excited for my husband to take his own philosophical advice there um, and uh, just to enjoy it for the sake of enjoying and not worry or be anxious about it at all. Oh my god. Um, so does anyone have any questions for our crew here? Oh, I see one right here. You want to come up? Pink flowers, yeah, come on up. How much time did it take to like start the book and then finish it and produce it? That's a great question. Um, I think I'm gonna give this one to Whitney because you know the full. <laughs> great question. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if we want the full history. <laughs> It started off at a, as a pitch uh, when I worked for a completely different company, and then I transferred jobs to Penguin Random House, and uh, I still loved the story so much that I reached out to Cam and was like, do you still want to pitch this? And that was probably like a... 2018, so it's like six years. Yeah, so that, so, yeah, and that was in 2018, so that's been six years to now. And so that's six years from the initial pitch idea to acquiring it to writing and drawing three books. So that's a grand scope of also like getting it to the printer. I would say each book took about a year and a half. Yeah. I think the writing for me takes about six months-ish. Um, and that's with lots of, that, that's like me taking my time. Um, but the art is, the art is the bit that takes, like if any, everyone who worked at Matt Makers, like, Amanda is the one who has put in the most hours, the most time, the most uh, talent, everything into it. Sanity. Um, <laughs> um, the first book was for the art was like Cam, where I was really cruising it, where, where he said he was cruising it. So that one, I remember the art took like a year and a half. Um, but then it really started kicking up and the second and third book went a little bit faster because we had the help of like a wonderful colorist um and so that i was just in charge of doing the ink work the line work for it and so i think that in total for both of them took about seven months from start to finish um but yeah it's been a journey <laughs> any other questions out there that was a good one yeah come on up How many pages did it happen for you to try? Ooh, how many pages are in the whole thing? Do we know? 
each book is 224 pages, I think, everyone. There were multiple times where I tried to sneak extra pages in there, and when he was like, hey, this is great, but you have to cut the last six pages. Again, it's 224 every time. Uh, yeah, so it's almost 700 pages when you put the whole, the whole thing together. It's a long book. Yeah, all the way in the back. Ooh, Drumlin Farm. I love Drumlin Farm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, this is more of a question for Amanda. Yes. If you would editorialize another fantasy novel series, what would you choose? Ooh, if you would adapt, if you wanted to draw a fantasy novel series. Oh, they know. They know. This one's for Cam, too. I would draw Lord of the Rings. <laughs> because it's really funny. Um, he actually got me into the series because uh, I had actually never watched it before doing Map Makers um, or read it. I'm still reading it. Um, but yeah, it was just I just fell in love with it and I could really see how it influenced him. Um, so yeah, I would do Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so in the first in the first script, one of the things that's great about writing comics is you're basically just writing for your artist. So you know you have to make sure that the dialogue is right and everything is going to work on the page. But in terms of what the artist sees, you can be a little more shorthand. It can be a little more conversational. And so I like to include references. So, oh, so like you know for this scene, Blue's doing this, and it kind of reminds me of and you know you link to an image or a, a clip of something. And throughout the first book. I would reference Lord of the Rings like dozens of times. And then after the whole book was done, at some point Amanda was like, yeah, I've never seen Lord of the Rings. I was like, I'm so sorry. I gave you all this stuff. And you're like, I don't know what this is. So um, yeah, that was, that was my bad. <laughs> That'll take you forever. <laughs> It'll be so long. But I would absolutely read it. Uh, all right, we got another one right there. Blue, dark blue shirt. And then we'll do the other dark blue shirt right in front. How long does it take to make a page perfect? Ooh, how long does it take to make a page perfect? Uh, <laughs> is it ever perfect? Yeah. No, there's no such thing as a perfect page. Um, it, I mean, it depends. It's like, I, I think it's like writing is kind of like, you know, some days you'll have it where I'll write 20 pages and I'll feel like every page is perfect and it just kind of comes. And some days you just try and get one page out and you're really equally happy that you were able to get one out um, and, and get it written. Um, so it kind of depends. There, it it's kind of depends on what you're writing and, and the pace of what you're going for the, for, the, for the writing side. I don't know if that's the same for the art. Yeah. I think for the art, because it does take longer and it's a little bit more time constrained, I was like strict on my schedule. So I would always try to get at least one page done a day. Um, I fell through on that multiple times. But uh, but yeah, like what Cam said, it's never a perfect page. And like the beauty of comics is that like it doesn't have to be perfect because um, there's so many pages and there's so much art to look at. So <laughs> yeah. I, I liked when you got book three and you were looking and you were like, oh my gosh, I'm so much better now than I was at the beginning. <laughs> All right, one more question we had over here and then we will do the cover drawing contest. Oh, two more, okay, two more. Um, have you ever hit any disagreements in your group? Ooh, fight, 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 fight. <laughs> Page count. <laughs> uh, how many pages? Well, yeah, yeah, page count. <laughs> I, I would say that one of the joys of working on this series is that the three of us work really well together, and we really do, like, I think we, again, it goes back to those initial conversations, like, we were, I think, knew why we were telling the story and why it was important to us, um, and I was so excited to have people to, to basically give this to and get their feeling. The best part of being a writer is you, you get to see the art come in. And what Amanda does, it's completely different than you know, what I had in mind. But it's so much better and, and something I couldn't have possibly imagined. Um, so I, I think we probably had little things where it was, we're not on the same page. But there was never a point where it got you know, like contentious. I think the biggest fight was about book two, and our kids were like, why are mom and dad not speaking to each other? <laughs> I think that was the worst one. All right, did we have two questions over here? Star pants. Who has star pants? Yeah. Yeah, star pants. <laughs> oh, with an awesome shirt, too. 
How did you decide what the covers looked like? Ooh, that's an excellent question. Okay, so uh, when you publish books, usually at like larger publishing houses, there is a designer. And so the cover was actually a team process. Um, so our wonderful designer, Patrick Crotty, um, he was the one who would sort of give me like, here's the things that we want to hit. Um, here's a couple of, sometimes he had like little mishmashed photoshopped uh, collages that he made that was kind of like the vibe that he was going for. So then it was kind of like a start for me um, to kind of get the feel of like what they want to, to go on the cover and it was just honestly a lot of back and forth from there so I would have like a set of sketches that he would get from me and then he would be like oh these ones are really great not so much these ones so like let's focus on these and so I'd come back and then it was just a lot of back and forth um, until we finally just hit something that worked and like each book what's what's nice is that each book and each portion of the world in every book has like its own distinctive feel so it was really fun to be able to get like the atmosphere of each um, portion of their world um, on the cover so yeah all right i think did we have any more we got one pink, pink jacket back there you want a question Yeah? No? No more questions? You want to come do a question? <laughs> All right. Is there going to be a book for? Ooh, is there going to be a book for? So we, we wanted to really make sure that we could tell a complete story. So um, who knows if one day Alda and Lewis have more adventures, but the, the three books that are out now, that is the, the, a complete story beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. So no, there, there's, <laughs> there's not going to be a book for it, but you never know. When in the future, who knows where Alda and Lewis will go. <laughs> All right, do we have any final questions before we wrap up? Well, thank every... Oh, do you want to come up again? You want to try again? All right. Um, well, um, how long did, why did you want to make the book? Why did you want to make the book? That is a great question. All right, that'll be our last question. <laughs> because it was an amazing story featuring magic and kids on this great adventure and uh, as someone who's like my entire editorial career has been graphic novels for kids it just felt like such a natural fit for the types of stories that i wanted to see out there for the audience that like i've dedicated my career to good answer <laughs> all right i think we're gonna end on that note that was great all right thank you guys everyone for coming to the map makers panel let's give a big hand to our panelists if anybody wants to visit them and ask more questions, get a book signed. They are going to be in the tent all day. They're in the back. Uh, they've got all three books, so go and join them. But right now, we have something very important to do. It is time to announce the winners of the Kids Cover Drawing Contest. Woo! Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> OK. So, we got, as far as I know, we got 168 submissions, I think, maybe even a little more. So this was a very hot competition. We had kids from, I think, ages set 5 to 12 were submitting. Um, we got some incredible covers. It was an incredibly hard decision. Um, I was a judge. Whitney was a judge. Whitney's Twin Bones, who is my designer, it's all very complicated, was also, and is also a comic book artist, was our third judge. We went through all of them. And we have our top three winners, and we have a new category this year as well for most improved from last year, because now this is the second Kids Graphic Novel Festival, so know that that is a new category. So if you submitted this year, you can submit again and see if you get the most improved award. So. For most improved, with a $25 gift card, is for the cover Bahama Llama Goes Skiing by Jack Verney. Is Jack here? Doesn't look like Jack is here. 
All right, so we're going to go to third place. Third place with a $50 gift certificate to the Silver Unicorn is for the cover Out of the Closet, The Rise of the LGBTQIA Plus Movement by Annabelle Bird. It's an amazing cover. Oh, and by the way, anyone that wants to see the covers, all of them are displayed inside the store, and the three winning covers will be above the doorway to the back, behind the curtain to the storeroom. Um, so you can go see them. They're incredible. All right, second place with a gift card of $100 to the Silver Unicorn is for the cover The Amazing Durr by Brooks Ferris, age nine. Is Brooks here? Looks like Brooks is not here. All right, so we're just going to have to go to the first prize. First prize with a $250 gift certificate to the Silver Unicorn is the cover for Behind the Mask by Zoe Birchall. Is Zoe here? It was so, so good. We, when we saw this cover, you guys all have to go look at it. All three of us immediately, we hadn't even seen all the covers yet. When it came in, we all said, that's the one. That's the one. That's the winner. It's beautiful. So thank you guys, everyone, for coming and contributing. Please do so again next year. It was so fun. Um, and stick around. There's going to be another panel after this. All right.